Hello and uh, welcome to e Dina. So we have a very special person, uh, Professor Yogendra Yadav. I'm saying special uh, because uh, since morning, probably from 11 a.m. onwards, he's being congratulated uh, by everybody that uh, he it was him who predicted this election uh, best. Um, I'm sure that Yogendra Ji uh, is happy not about that, but about what uh, outcome this election uh, uh, the uh, outcome of this election. Yogendra Ji, uh, thank you and welcome to this uh, uh, program. Thank you, Dr. Vasu. I mean, you must be, this feeling must not be new to you. When in Karnataka election, you had forecast the absolutely correct range. Uh, you must have received all the, I mean, you. I know you received all these congratulations. These are ephemeral things. They come and go. Yes, there's a bit of satisfaction that you, uh, satisfaction is not about getting the forecast right and getting it exactly within the margins I said, but and this is the, that's a bit of a fluke that you get it right. Uh, but satisfaction is that we could puncture that completely false narrative that was being set with the help of media, with the help of survey agencies, char so far, and so on and so forth. And even and after I, the elections with the exit polls, which was totally unnecessary. Absolutely. No, no, no. These things are, these are very deep games uh, because it has huge implications for stock market and so on and so forth. You know, you and I don't understand these games, but these are very deep games. Uh, but so the satisfaction is, I mean, this is of course a minor satisfaction that we got the numbers right. Uh, satisfaction is that we, uh, along with all the colleagues in civil society, Bharat Joro Abhiyan, everyone put together, could puncture this completely false narrative that was being foisted on this country. Aiga to Modi hi, char so par, Modi hai to mumkin hai. Uh, and it's actually in my duty as a political activist that I did what I did because I have some professional expertise in these things. I used it. My greater satisfaction, Dr. Vasu, is about the fact that uh, uh, the EVMs have worked. Uh, to be <laughs> honest, in the last 48 hours, I was a little anxious, as you know, I have been a critic of the EVM conspiracy theory. I yes. always maintain, don't get into this. Yes, yes. And to tell you the truth, last 48 hours, I did have a second thought. Maybe these exit polls are being done in order to cover something up. That has not happened. And it's such a good news. I'm so happy to be proven wrong. And uh, for, uh, uh, for the fact that this system works, that's yes. really great news for Indian democracy. But above all, Dr. Basu, the happiness that you see on my face is because uh, democracy is living and thriving in this country. As we say in Hindi, I don't know if there's a Kannada equivalent. I say, uh, Tantra par lok ki vijay. Yes. You know, we say in Hindi, lok tantra. But the tantra, the system, tends to dominate lok, the people. And occasionally, there are moments in democracy when lok rises up and put the Tantra aside. This is one of those rare moments. And it is so ennobling. It is so, such a, such a, uh, such a wonderful moment. You know, when I was young, I was 14 year old uh, in 1977. I saw this for the first time when uh, Mrs. Gandhi was defeated, Congress was defeated. And I felt, oh, this is democracy. The mightiest can be brought to dust. That's exactly what has happened today. And it is such a special yeah, I do still remember um, almost uh, one and a half or uh, two years back when you decided that everything should be set aside and the only uh, work that we have to do is to work to defeat Mr. Modi and this regime. Um, and uh, I know that uh, you uh, started working uh, with many civil society organizations and even Congress. Uh, people uh, at that time uh, were uh, actually very, I mean, uh, it was a surprise for many of them because uh, Professor Yogendra Yadav has almost joined Congress, though you never did. Uh, and you also walked in both the Yatras. Uh, I remember all that. But um, are you satisfied with the numbers? Uh, because uh, BJP is saying that they've still won it. You, uh, uh, Mr. Modi uh, has uh, thanked uh, the people of India that they have restored faith in NDA um, and uh, as if uh, nothing has happened. Uh, so what do you think about it? <laughs> you know, the trouble with BJP is that they truly believe that they can peddle any lie and get away with it. That is what has cost them this election. 
and they're still doing the same thing. This is what happens to autocrats and dictators. They actually cannot believe that people will stop believing in them. So, uh, you know, this is now at this moment, BJP is organizing a grand tamasha where Mr. Nadda has just given a speech saying, uh, you know, great third victory for Mr. Modi. And television channels absolutely brazenly are playing their agenda. I mean, as I'm speaking to you, I can read this headline, only second such head trace. Modi has repeated what Nehru has done, as if Mr. Modi has got 320 seats. So they are absolutely playing the same thing. But you know, what happens really, and that's the real message of the of today, is the public hai, sab jaanti. Yes. People know it. You know, even when they cannot disentangle the complex sophisticated layers of what's happening, even when they don't understand parliamentary proceedings, they don't understand changes in the IT rules, they can sniff and smell it. They know something is wrong. That is what has happened. And as you it, rightly uh, noticed that in uh, villages of UP and Bihar probably, that um, people who are not activists, not party cadres said that Tana Shahi uh, nahi chalega. So that and was... in those very villages today, when BJP is giving all these speeches of a great victory, celebration, and so on and so forth, who do they think they are fooling? <laughs> do, don't the people know that? Don't the people, haven't they seen the numbers? And don't people have this ordinary intelligence to understand that you were saying, Char so far, till day before yesterday, you have 100 times more money than any other player. You had the entire mainstream media of this country at your feet as your spokesperson. You had the entire machinery from administrative officers to police to ED to IT, even unfortunately the election commission. And in spite of all that, you could not get 272, that you are stopped at 240. Don't people understand this elementary thing? I mean, who do they think they are fooling? The fact is that they have lost the mandate. And this is a brazen attempt to cover it up. And this, to my mind, will actually infuriate the people even more. You know, Hindi may we say, Jale par namak you know, when there's a burn and you apply salt on it. This is what they are doing. But the trouble is dictators forget what they are doing. No, but um, uh, you're saying the political part of it, but um, cephalogically speaking, uh, because um, uh, BJP's vote share has not uh, uh, gone down so much. Um, so with this, how do you, in numbers and in the swing, how do you analyze this? Uh, well, simple basic things. Number one, BJP's own seats have gone down by 65. Uh, BJP's... Uh, overall national vote share has declined by 1%. That does not tell you the story. The real story, because that 1% is an artifact of uh, the fact that BJP has A, contested more seats. B, BJP has increased its vote share from Kerala to Odisha. But if you look at the area which was dominated by the BJP, where BJP swept the polls in 2019, uh, that area that begins from Karnataka, and comes all the way to Bihar and Jharkhand. Everywhere BJP has lost significant. I'll just give you the figures. Uh, in Karnataka, where you sit, the, uh, the swing is less than what you may have expected, but the swing is 6%. 6% vote swing. Normally, 6% is enough to change governments. 6% vote swing. Uttar Pradesh, 8% swing away from uh, BJP. BJP. In Bihar, where the change is not that big, the vote shift from BJP is exactly 8% in Bihar as well. In Maharashtra, if you measure it by the NDA as it stood last time, it's a 9% swing from in Maharashtra. If you look at Rajasthan, 11% swing. Haryana, 12% swing. Even in Himachal Pradesh, where they have not lost seats, it's a 14% swing. So except Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, the entire belt has witnessed a swing against the BJP. This is clearly a political message. It is not accidentally losing a few seats while retaining the vote share. What about other places where BJP has increased its vote share? Yes, BJP has. 
But this is not the BJP that Mr. Modi is leading right now. This is a BJP that presents itself as a regional party. In Andhra Pradesh, BJP is a partner of Telugu Desham, which is riding on anti-incumbency wave. In Telangana, BJP presents itself as a party of the backward caste, uh, a slot which is empty, which was occupied by BRS. Yes, yes. Is entering that particular slot. And in Odisha, BJP comes up as a party of regional pride. All these are perfectly legitimate things to do. But let us not confuse this increase with the basic systematic loss of face of uh, votes that the BJP has suffered, loss of votes as well as loss of seats. And in, so B, and in, uh, Punjab, and Tamil, in Punjab and Tamil Nadu, there are no allies, so they are contesting in all the seats. So that will add right. to some votes. That further. leads to an artificial increase in vote share. The important thing is that, you know, in the larger political context, look, any electoral verdict is put in a political background. <clears throat> when Mr. Modi got 282 seats, it was not called a narrow majority. It was called a historic verdict. Yes. Because for because for 25, and very rightly, because for three decades after 1980, no single party got majority. single majority and its own. So it is that context which gave Mr. Modi's majority oh. a, into made it an extraordinary verdict. Similarly, the context today is of a party which has had complete political dominance and which has failed to secure even a simple majority after making loud claims, systematic claims and an impression that they were going to get three-fourth majority. I mean, if this is not defeat, what is a defeat? And uh, uh, media played into it very um, consciously and uh, uh, even uh, after the uh, election. And uh, I've noticed today that except one, you have not given your time to the so-called mainstream media, which all of them <laughs> fall into the category of Godi media. And uh, is it a sort of stand that uh, one should take? Uh, even Rahul Gandhi uh, in, uh, during his entire uh, Bharat Jodo Abhiyan time, um, he has avoided Godi media. Is this uh, uh, the correct message? Um, what do you think about it, sir? Uh, Dr. Vasu, I met someone from the Godi media three days ago. And he said something nice to me. He said, look, you call us Godi media, but this is like a lamb sitting in the Godi of a lion. And you are blaming the lamb. And he said, it's not just we, the journalists, it's also our owners. They are also in the same trap. So, uh, you know, I, you know, please focus your attention on the lion, not on the lamb. Mm -hmm. uh, that is truly the situation. Uh, shameful as it is, disgraceful as the media has been. Uh, I do not blame ordinary journalists for that. After all, they are doing their job. They are paying their rent. They are bringing up their families. and. Uh, uh, my real big hope today is that because of the kind of verdict that we have had, there would be some opening in the media. There would, media would acquire some voice, or so I hope. As I speak to you, the media is very happily playing Mr. Modi's speeches, putting up great captions. But I'm sure these are captions they must have prepared last night. Uh, by tomorrow, they would have a second thought about it. And I do expect Mediascape to open up a bit. And if that opens, that's a healthy thing. And we should not buy caught on that. Is it only media or there are some more autonomous institutions in this country which have also lost their credibility uh, during this period? Do you think that there is any hope, even if Mr. Modi comes back to power um, as an NDA prime minister, do you think that those institutions will also assert themselves so that they can play the real the role that they have to play in the democracy. Uh, I'm not speaking of a dramatic turnabout, but yes, there would be change. I mean, the fact is that uh, judiciary's conduct, judiciary's orientation, has been dictated by electoral outcomes. When they feel that the government enjoys overwhelming popular mandate, judiciary is very restrained, and when they feel that no. Uh, they are, there is competition and things are happening, then judiciary suddenly acquires a new role. This happens all over the world. 
So I do expect judiciary to be able to pay a little more attention to the letter and spirit of the constitution than they have been able to do in the last few years. Uh, other independent institutions, I don't know. I don't expect ED and CBI to suddenly start being independent. Of course, they can't. But other checks and balances come in. But most important than anything else, it is the popular resistance which would be strength. And in the last instance, it is not uh, uh, in Sansar, but in Sarak, that democracy is saved. And the resistance on the streets would get stronger. Uh, it may face uh, brutal oppression, repression by the government. That's a different matter. But I expect the resistance to become stronger, uh, voices of resistance to become louder. Uh, that is uh, what would be a, uh, those are the things that I'm banking upon. And that in all is what I call opening up of democracy. So uh, much before uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra won, uh, not just that you uh, joined the Yatra um, in the name of Bharat Jodo Abhiyan, you also uh, requested and expected uh, the civil society organizations to join that movement. So probably many people like you who all their life um, opposed Congress, uh, worked with Congress and of course other opposition parties. Uh, what do you think about it? Do you think that uh, Congress has stood up to um, the expectations of people like you, the people like us? And uh, do you think that uh, the civil society organization should continue to work with these parties uh, even now? Uh, Dr. Basu, the decision was not to support the Congress. The decision was to help and support and work with every force that can rescue the situation, that can work to secure the constitution of the country uh, and the constitutional values and democratic institutions. That is what we, uh, like the opposition to Congress that many of us had uh, displayed, was not an opposition to Congress per se. In fact, Devanuru Mahadev uh, said something very nice to capture it. He said, Congress was the establishment. We were opposing power and establishment. When establishment shifts and someone else becomes establishment, it would be silly and idiotic to say, but however, I would continue to oppose the name. You don't oppose a name. You oppose a certain kind of politics and dominance, uh, which is what we have done. We have worked not only with Congress, we have worked with various parties in West Bengal. Bharat Jodo Abhiyan colleagues have, uh, and others have come in and joined. They have worked with TMC as well. In Uttar Pradesh, we've worked with Samajwadi Party. So different places, we have worked with different parties. Uh, in terms of Congress, I think Congress has done two big things that should be appreciated. Number one, Congress did not give in to Congress leadership, I should say. Congress leadership did not give in to the temptation of tailing the BJP in soft Hindutva line. They stood their ground. They were not, uh, they, they did not take a very aggressive line that many of our secular friends would have wanted. But they did not waver in the basic secular line that Congress took. Specifically, I should name Rahul Gandhi, who stood his ground on this question. And secondly, uh, and that was the big achievement of the Bharat Jodo Yatra, the word Mohabbat could be used. And in that completely bleak scenario, you would remember when we started the Yatra, what did country's landscape look like? In that bleak scenario, he had the courage to stand up and stick to his guns. Number two, in the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra, the second part, uh, he reoriented Congress back to its own social base. What is Congress's base? It's the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, poor, Dalit, Adivasi, BC, uh, minorities, all the marginalized sections of society. That is Congress's vote. Uh, unfortunately, Congress's leadership and policies was at divergence with its own social base. Rahul Gandhi ensured, with the help of that yatra, that it is real. Congress's manifesto echoed it. Congress's policy pronouncements echoed it. So, the, though in a sense, he has ensured that the vehicle is now facing in the right direction. I don't think the vehicle is moving very fast. I would like it to move faster. But first, you have to reorient. That big reorientation has taken place. There is a lot of work that remains to be done. No political party. Uh, should be satisfied with 100 seats if 272 is the target. But if Congress sticks to these two things, 
and maintains that larger India coalition in the spirit of coalition, then I think there is definitely a future. And I said to someone, and I mean it seriously, the distance between 50 and 100 is the same as the difference with distance between 100 and 300. You know, the effort required is about the same. Jim, yes. So now that this much effort has been put in, it's time to put more effort, to go systematically, and to bring about substantial changes within the Congress organization, which would be needed. The similar thing applies to political parties as we need a coalition to take on RSS BJP. Uh, and uh, I really see India Bloc as the beginning of that larger coalition. Yes, sir. And uh, during this election, uh, you are not just uh, an activist or a social thinker who was uh, working with uh, working within the political process, but you also went back to uh, cephalogy. So it was also looking like, uh, I mean, which role you uh, think you played more? And uh, of course, in Karnataka also, we are playing different roles. We are media, we are activists, and we also tried our... Um, uh, our venture into uh, surveys. Of course, uh, uh, this time our survey was not so accurate. Uh, we predicted what we, 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 Congress was short of what we predicted, three or four short of it. And, uh, but uh, your cephalogy, though you, I mean, you did not um, change the numbers to suit what other friends that uh, wanted you to do, that even NDA will not get majority. You did not say that. But still, uh, you uh, there was some more respect for uh, when you speak about the numbers. So how did you find that role? Dr. Vasu, modern politics is changing and we need to change with that. Uh, you see, uh, in the older days, the instruments that we had, the instruments that we learned when we were students was Dharna, Pradarshan, Rally and elections and so on. Now, modern politics is really about communication. And most of us who come from progressive radical circles have not quite understood this. Much of me, BJP's power in this election resided in its narrative and the narrative of the inevitability of Modi's victory. So Modi's victory was the cause of Modi's victory. You see, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it was very important that some of us should bust and function. Uh, and uh, that is what drew me back to the role, which was not my original role. And that's not something I really want to do. But yes, you have a certain professional expertise, like you are a medical doctor. So sometimes you need to, you know, you need to use your professional expertise for a larger cause, which is what I did. And when you use professional expertise, like uh, if you have to, you know, if uh, some calamity takes place and you have to go back to your role as a medical doctor in that, then you would follow protocols of what it means to be a medical doctor. You know, you would respect those limits. You would uh, you would have to set aside your political biases for some time, uh, which is what I did. Uh, now, it's very hard to mix those two roles. And I know uh, lots of friends wanted me to say things which would, you know, like BJP is not getting 200 seats, NDA, India Alliance is getting 300 and so on. But that would violate the basic canons of credible election analysis. And if I have taken that role of an analyst for my political larger uh, journey, then I have to do it by the rules of the game. You cannot be, you cannot, you know, I, because I, I mean, I could, I could say things which are nonsensical. And today everyone would be laughing. And even if that has served a purpose from tomorrow onwards, no one would believe in such things. So to be credible, to be, I mean, the trouble is that people think Honesty is uh, is a uh, is uh, dispensable. People don't quite see that honesty is uh, a good policy. You actually, if you stick to it, but the trouble is that we don't associate honesty and politics at all. We just believe that uh, you know it's all right to be bold, though, yeah. But that doesn't work. So I tried to do what what I could because, and I started all this because Prasvasu, uh, because I found that. What the BJP was saying was a complete lie. If I believed it was not a lie, I would have kept quiet. I may not have advertised BJP. I may not have done sephology. 
but I would have kept quiet. It's only when I realized that, no, this is completely false. This is not true on the ground. That's when I took to it. I performed my role. I hope I didn't disappoint my friends. I hope I was not lying. At least that's what is more important. Yes, sir. Last question. Now that you reminded me my medical background. Uh, in this last one and a half, two years uh, period, you traveled extensively uh, without any rest. And in between, you were also hospitalized and uh, uh, was actually very much tired. So do you hope to take uh, some rest now? or uh, is Yes. That... Are you offering me a nice place in uh, uh, Kodugu, Kodugu or, uh, or uh, somewhere in Nilgiri Hills? Yes, certainly some rest. And, you know, as I keep saying to everyone, the best thing that you can do for your health is to choose your parents very carefully. That's what I did. I continue to <laughs> like, reap benefits of that great choice that I made. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, but at the same time, probably the next five years will be an intense uh, political, ideological and cultural battle also in this country. Absolutely. Yes. Ladenge, jite. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for joining us. Matashto Vishesha video Kalanu Nodalu, Matu Hosa video Galabake Tirialu, Edina.com YouTube channel subscribe Madi, Matu bell icon click Madi.